And we are live. This is Jones from CRT Gaming Podcast, welcoming you to episode number 10, Golden Axe. In celebration of Sega's 60th birthday, I decided to do a run of games developed by Sega. Uh, this week, I chose Golden Axe. Um, it's been one of my favorite Genesis games of all time. Uh, it's a medieval side-scrolling beat-em-up. And uh, I've always uh, really liked this game. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Gohan and Daz Pick. And uh, Mr. Gohan, uh, did you play some Golden Axe this week? I played a lot of Golden Axe this week. Are you drenched in Death Adder blood? That's what I want to know. I am marinating in Death Adder blood, and Uria has found its champion. Excellent. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to know if you got invited to the feast. That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> the feast! <laughs> oh, I heard that good chuckle there from Daz Pick. Uh, <laughs> How you doing tonight, my friend? I'm great, man. It's uh, yeah, Golden Axe, baby. Good times. <laughs> what, what's not to like? Have yeah. You uh, rode your fair share of chicken legs. Yeah, I kicked them free from those little midget bastards. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do. You got to take that guy. You got to ride him around like a chocobo. And uh, <laughs> do you know, like out of, out of everything in this game I did not know this but uh, b before this episode started I kind of did a little bit of research and then I, I didn't kind of I believed it but I didn't quite believe it so I had to go see it for myself the chicken leg creature is actually first appearance in Altered Beast oh yeah absolutely yeah I, I kind of forgotten about that I had to go back and play I mean, he's a franchise maker <laughs> it's just waiting to like 2025 like, come back out yeah you know uh, designed by the same uh, creator you know uh, you know Yuchida made this game uh, along with Altered Beast and uh, yeah I mean it, it kind of begs the question are, are both games happening in the same fictional universe you know you be the judge <laughs> it does bring up some questions that is for sure so wait, when you turn into the little dragon thing on the two of Altered Beasts, does that mean that the dragon... <laughs> the, the wait person... a minute. What? <laughs> See, well, we imagine if, <laughs> if the Golden Axe people are just like really tiny and they're on the back of the beasts in Altered <sighs> Beasts or something. It also like be like a summoning spell when you do magic, <laughs> like the Elder Beast dragon comes in. Yes. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, this game was just awesome back in the day. I mean, it really can't be said enough, but Sega was just absolutely killing it in the late 80s in the arcade. They just had a string of hit after hit after hit. I mean, they had, you know, Space Harrier and Shinobi and Afterburner and Outrun. And, you know, then Golden Axe came out and uh, it, it was just, you know, they, they were on fire back back at that time. Oh, definitely. And then, like, what really helped the Genesis out at that moment in time was, you know, like, Sega was releasing these, you know, arcade hit smashes. And kind of looking back at it now, this might kind of be part of the reason, like, the arcades, you know, slowly withered away, is, is they were dropping, you know, ports of their arcade releases, you know, onto the Genesis system. But I didn't realize they were happening this fast because uh, Golden Axe came out in the arcade of May of 89. Okay. By December, it was on the Genesis. You oh, know, so, shit. Wow. That is a, a short turnaround. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, why, you know, it gets to that point. Like, do I spend, you know, $4 to play through this in the arcade or do I just play it forever at home? Because it was a decent adaptation of the game by all means it was really good really really good and it had the versus mode man <laughs> yeah i mean it 
really was faithful. You know, the, the Sega was an arcade company first, you know, but when the Genesis came out, they had to really rely on third party and their own stable of stuff to keep people hooked. And Golden Axe was kind of one of the few games from their arcade titles that offered to me the length and replay value that you kind of expect, you know, Outrun while awesome and Hang On while awesome. They were pretty limited, but awesome, you know, high quality experiences. But this actually allowed you to kind of play, you know, a longer format game. Yeah, and it also what was kind of cool about it was it expanded upon the arcade. It's like, um, in, in the arcade, when you reach the end of the game, at that same point in the Genesis, it, it the game differed. Like it had a slight, uh, a slight variation in the game, and then it went on to a whole new level that yeah, didn't did. exist in the arcade. So that, that was levels. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a nightmare, but it was Man, good. awful. Level. Awful. Yeah, whoever uh, designed the skeleton combatants, he dick. has a seat at Lucifer's right hand, I think. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like I said, I have a, a little uh, bit of notes in front of me just to keep me uh, on point when we do these. And I have a paragraph, and the title of the paragraph is Skeletons, 89 Pounds <laughs> of Absolute Terror. <laughs> Dude, they're assholes. <laughs> they're uh, terrible. They totally are. Yeah, the, the worst thing is to get stuck between two of them, and it's just uh, a, uh, it's a hate crime, that's what it is. Yeah, because... You get the both of them whacking away your health, and then you get knocked on your ass, and then Death Adder magics your ass while you're laying on your back. And it's like, oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, the kids nowadays talk about, like, the Minecraft, you know, bad guys. Like, they hold, they cannot hold a candle no. a, a, to, to the, to the two-skeleton combo. With, <laughs> go a couple rounds with Death Adder and his cronies. Kick your ass. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, I think that, well, they, they did change it because the guy that was Death Adder became, for the Genesis, Death Adder Jr. Yeah. And then the guy at the <laughs> end was Death Bringer. So, you know, I, I don't know where Death Adder Yeah, he, he, he is Death Bringer. He, he definitely was. Yeah, especially well, Death Adder, he was off making, attack. he was off making Revenge of Death Adder. <laughs> <laughs> He's already working on the sequel. Yeah. His <laughs> agent the got, him, for the got him working on that. <laughs> I mean, the the brawler genre. I Double Dragon was kind of the first game that made that a staple in arcades. And to me, the, the second game that kind of took on that mantle was definitely Golden Axe. You know, they Sega brought like all their own kind of innovations to the genre the, you know the they had unlike double dragon you had different characters and the characters actually had like different builds you know they were subtle you know but they had differentiation between like you're the red guy or the blue guy and yeah i mean i remember uh just how eye-popping the magic was when the game was in attract mode and uh the arcade that i remember seeing this at had the sound turned up so loud you could hear it like all the way down the concourse of the wall. <laughs> it's just so loud. It's just like this heartbeat, you know. Uh, and uh, it was, you know, back then the uh, the game that was kind of front and center by the entrance. So it was it was what they were proud of, you know, in their arcade at the time. Yeah, what was really cool is you had a, you know, it's basically a medieval side-scrolling beat-em-up uh, that you can play single player or co-op with. Um, but you had three characters you could choose from. Um, you had X Badla. He's a uh, male barbarian with like a broadsword. And what's really important here is he's looking for revenge for the murder of his mother. You know, that's that's heavy. aren't we all? I mean, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> you know, it, 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 he's got beef. Uh, because uh, Death Adder's just wronged all these people. Uh, you have a uh, female character. <laughs> he set named... the skeletons for him. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a, a Amazon type character named Tyrus Flare. But her uh, here's Death Adder again. Uh, you know, he took her parents down. 
mom and dad done. So uh, she's a little upset. And finally, you have Gilius Thunderhead, the dwarf from the mines of Wulud. <laughs> Took his <laughs> and- mead. <laughs> yeah, what's his beef? Like, what's his what's his axe to grind? Well, <laughs> his main beef is he had a twin brother until like Death Adder showed up, and he's like, "Hey, yo, there's two of you. I don't like it. One's got to go." So, you know, he's dead. Gilius is upset, just drunken on mead. Decides to go after him. <laughs> What is interesting about that character, though, is in the arcade, he actually carried the golden axe. Yes. In all the other ports of it, his axe is gray. But in the yeah, arcade, like it's that. actually gold. No, I don't see what. why not. You know, that's the golden axe. Yeah. Had, oh, okay. He so the he's, damn like weapon. Carrying, he's carrying the ultimate weapon, kind of. Yeah. It's either the ultimate weapon or maybe it's just what the story's based on. Like the man, you know, with the... You know, whatever golden gun. It's just you know, he had a golden axe. There you it's go. His story. Yeah. The the universe that the game took place in was pretty cool. You know, it it wasn't quite Lord of the Rings, and it wasn't quite like you know Howard's Conan kind of universe. It was a cool anime take, kind of somewhere in the middle, mixing in like a lot of crazy kind of animal, you know, iconography and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was kind of medieval fantasy. Uh, yeah, definitely. So you had a, a rideable mounts, you know, you could get throughout the game, which were pretty cool. Um, had uh, different color dragons, had a blue dragon and a red dragon. I think the red dragon was the shit. The red dragon would be the fireballs. fireballs. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> just wreck shit. <laughs> And the, the uh, blue one just did flames, I believe. Yeah. Ride the strange pink bird armadillo thing. <laughs> and, like, can you imagine being the guy in Death Adder's army? It's like, okay, you get the blue dragon, you get the red, and then you get this. You get thing. this. Guy. You get the skink. <laughs> you get the skink. <laughs> yeah, but then, like, uh, each character, uh, you know, in addition to having their basic attacks, they all have. Uh, different levels of magic right like the uh the dwarf um is like the lowest on the magic tier and then the barbarian in the middle and the female at the end but uh the female's magic powers get a little ridiculous because you know like the more potions you acquire the the magic level builds up to different levels and each one has a different effect which i've always i thought that was like pretty cool aspect of the game Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that to me, like for, for my 13 year old brain, like seeing the Amazon cast the magic and the massive dragon comes down and breathes fire. I think I almost had a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It takes a minute to get all those freaking potions, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, fortunately, there's two little guys running around. Uh, throughout the game yeah they're, yeah they're thieves basically there's a uh, a blue one and a green one and the uh, the blue one you know gives you magic potions and the green one gives you food or life but what I thought was kind of weird is like after you beat the game it does, it runs through and it gives you the character names for everybody mm. and it gives you like bios for people like you know uh, like how much they weigh how tall they are and for these thieves okay for the blue one it says blue thief belongings pot yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's i'm like assuming a, yeah. maybe the little urn that he's carrying <laughs> are the developers but i don't know maybe they were you know <laughs> one thing I, th- I thought was a little interesting or, or strange is like the arcade like when it starts off uh you're greeted by your friend named Alex and then like Death Adder's dudes come up and they kill him and he kind of gives you the information that the princess and king have been kidnapped and then you you go on your quest um the Genesis one just kind of like like from your vantage point you're just like walking down the road and some dudes come up and then you know it's on on, yeah from my mom on it's on it's time to do some work (laughs) 
Yeah, but it takes away, you know, Alex's loss, you know, everything. See, so we have we have Tyrus Flare, we have Gilius Thunderhead, we have Axe Battler, and then we have Alex, who <laughs> is like <laughs> clearly he's, you know, part of the crew. Yeah, he could have been like the fourth man. One thing that I, I came across this week. Um it's talking to my good friend Gohan here, uh, about uh Turbo Graphics games, Turbo Duo games. PC Engine games, and I was familiar with a good bit of the U.S. releases and some of the Japanese ones, but I came across something I didn't know even existed, which Golden Axe was released for the PC Engine on the CD format. And Neat. this, what's really cool about this is like a lot of their games maybe like an inferior counterpart as far as something about the game goes like the game itself is far inferior to the genesis version um, it, it kind of almost looks like a, a sega master system plus level i mean it's it's really not that good looking of a game but really really selling it <laughs> what it does though is it goes the extra mile you get a full intro to Golden Axe. Alex for... dies. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you have an intro of the creation of Death Adder, like a little animated movie. Ooh. Wait a minute. Yeah, oh yeah, it gets deeper. <laughs> um, and then for each character, it has their own animated intro story. Like, I don't get to hear about mom and mom and dad dying with a little Miss Flare. I get to live it. I get to see what happened. Tragedy is real. Yeah, and then I go on my quest. I go down. I take that ladder down, and I get a little. I get closure at the end. I don't get this stupid meal for free. I don't get a happy meal. I get. I get real closure. <laughs> don't you know? Don't sell the feast short, Jones. <laughs> well, the, the, you can't really sell the, sell the feast short because in the arcade, um, you just basically had all the enemies jumped out of a, an arcade machine. And... I absolutely remember this. This was such a cool thing uh, because me and my buddy were such experts at it. Like we would beat the game with probably just the quarters that were in our pocket. And the ending of the game was so much. It, it was pretty awesome. You know, the arcade, you know, cabinet exploding and all the gold max bad guys invading the real world, like out of a yeah. portal. Like that yeah, I was, think they... uh, it, it just kind of showed that the, it, there's, there was fun in it, you know, that it, it was a, didn't take itself very seriously. So it was, uh, it was kind of cool versus most of the, uh, kind of, you know, quick and over endings that you got with most arcade games, like in double dragon, you know, you, you know, you know, save the girl and, you know, beat the, you know, the gang boss where this you're almost kind of like treated with this little cartoon when you beat the game. Nice. Yeah, it was, I think the game they came out of was called Battle, Battle Axe, maybe, or Axe Battle. <laughs> I, I don't remember, but it, it was, you know, it's a strange ending, but it was fun. Um, but what was really cool about that, uh, the PC Engine version was, like I said, each character has their own storyline, uh, you know, fully voice acted with, you know, animated clips. And it had the Golden Axe music, like fully CD orchestrated. So upon learning all this, I go down a Reddit rabbit hole, okay? <laughs> as you do. And, 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 what, and what people are doing is because the Genesis version, as far as, you know, like a, a port to a home console was about as, as good as you can get like in the, the retro land. They were taking the Sega CD version of Golden Axe, which is on like a like a five disc, a five game collection disc or something. And they were replacing all the Red Book audio of that game with the PC Engine game, trying to make like the perfect Golden Axe. <laughs> that is awesome. Hey, that's what I told you. <laughs> that is you. dedication. That is dedication. Yeah, that was my surprise for you. I mean, the, the the music is you know a big part of why I loved this game. You know, in the arcade and at home, and <clears throat> not a whole lot is known about the about the guy that did the soundtrack for it. Um, 
his name's you know Yu Takata, and he did this game, and he did one of my other favorite Sega games, uh, Eswat, and then apparently he just kind of. Oh man, Eswat was awesome. It was Eswat was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, it was a cool Shinobi clone, but you know apparently he just did these two games and then just kind of disappeared and left the industry. So kind of makes you wonder what other kind of things would have come from him. It, it, the music is memorable. It totally fits like the gameplay. Like it has a, like an epic, you know, medieval-ish oh, yeah, like the feeling to it. Pounding. The uh, levels you spoke of earlier um, were, were really fitting, but they, they were like, uh, I, it had a map that it would kind of show you as you progress through the level where you were and you went to like these crazy turtle. locations. Yeah, you're on the back of a like a giant turtle. On the back of an eagle and back of... <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It was definitely you know, very fantasy based. But it like I said it was really it really fit the game well. One thing I I spoken on earlier is that at the end of the game, uh, when you beat it you get all the characters' bios and uh this would kind of make sense a little bit for the what these people were, were getting into is uh the the villagers are, are the you know the, the ones that always run away from the bad guys like the uh the thugs with clubs and the ex-women and stuff um they're by like like a, a normal man in this game is three foot and then less than one inch and he weighs 67 pounds <laughs> I think Jesus. something might be lost in translation there. <laughs> no, this is this is no because the this woman. Is lore. This is lore. <laughs> the woman's only four foot tall, and she weighs seventy eight pounds. So she's a, a full foot taller than the villager. And well, how how big does that make the Uncle Phil sledgehammer guys? <laughs> the oh, Uncle I, Phil. <laughs> I, I, I have that data. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but Death Adder himself. <laughs> is eight foot 667 pounds like these people just do not stand a chance <laughs> against the might of death adder no not i mean is that that adder know, jr or death bringer that actually amazingly all, all the death people are exactly the same height and weigh exactly the same oh good genes and, and they all go to the same gym they just all go to the same gym <laughs> they eat the same villagers it's all good <laughs> <laughs> but there's some memorable uh character names like uh there's there's the knights like uh you know like the silver knight and the red knight um it's good yeah, they, well like that's what i call them <laughs> but they are they're actually like of the bitter family like there's lieutenant lieutenant bitter then there's colonel bitter and general bitter <laughs> The bitter, you know, military the, life runs deep in the bitter family. <laughs> Let's just say he's not happy to see you in the game. Okay. <laughs> just when I kick him off the, the platform and that last level. Jesus. Now that's a big part of the game is just getting the enemies off the level. Like whether you cheese yeah. them, they fall uh, to their death, or you that is a them fight art. Or, or you miss the kick and fly off the damn platform yourself. <laughs> that happens. Yes, that happens that, a lot. That, that is also the most soul crushing thing in the game is like you 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 die, you come back with all of your health, and then s some guy gets in some cheap shot and like off the level you go. Of, yep, at least in the home version where every you know life kind of counts. I think. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a that was a real pisser. <laughs> yeah, things go get you know get turned upside down real quick in a fight sometimes. I mean, the, at the heart of the game, though, is just really good brawler combat. You know, I, I was actually curious, is this the first game that actually has like a double tap dash attack? Like, I'm trying to think of another game that had that. Of course, it became like a mainstay in fighting games like years later, you know, to, to dash in it to dash out but like i'm trying to think of another brawler game that had that because double dragon the character moved at the same kind of constant speed and yeah you could like jump around or whatever but like the dash i can't think of another game that had that immediately offhand i i cannot yeah going through the the rolodex of 80s arcade games i can't think of one either off the top of my head right now i mean it was, it was awesome like it oh, let was great you, 
like there's a lot of screen you know in the gameplay there's a lot of screen for you to like walk around and using that you were able to cover ground super quickly and And man if you are not good at that by the end of the game you're the odds are against you (laughs) they're not totally they're not your favorite you got to be able to you have to kick them off you have to put them on their backs because christ if they put you on your back you're especially on that last level (laughs) yes the you know knockdown um the knockdown damage from the The real you know, death adder boss like down <laughs> dragon combo that guy eats a dick <laughs> <laughs> jesus <laughs> Drift trigger whatever uh, asshole I, I had more trouble with the skeletons than i did him actually it's it's getting free from the skeletons to do yeah. with them is the problem yeah, but every time this, any time I ended up on my back, he's oh surprise motherfucker, and he throw <laughs> freaking some kind of magic on me. I was like, you son of a bitch, come on, man. <laughs> so I ended up getting hit. I mean, it was ugly. One side, one skeleton's behind me, one's in front of me. They both take off like two or three chunks of my health. I get knocked on my back. I get hit by his little magic that rolls around the ground. That hits me on the again, and then he dragoned me on top of that. So it was like one King life combo. completely wasted. It was like, okay, Jesus well, Christ. I mean, you know, back when I owned this game as, you know, a, a teenager, like kind of like, you know, Ninja Warriors, like that was Golden Axe is one of those games that you could like beat in an hour. So it was like, yes, you could just jump in, play it, have fun, you know, get out. And I just i'm blown away at how my skills have failed since the last time i played this game because yeah but, young me but, was that, awesome. but like we said before i mean this this was the game that you had you didn't have 50 other games this was the one mm-hmm. you know so you played the ever-living shit out of it and you knew how to deal with those skeletons you knew how to deal with death adder because that was all you were doing all the time and hell yeah, I remember once I had it for, you know, I had it a week. Hey, I was beating the shit out of it every time I turned it on. But now, what, 30 some odd years later, I'm trying again. And it's like, ha ha ha, don't try. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a learning curve getting back, you know, to uh, where we were. Ah, <laughs> brutal. I tried again a little while ago. Just gave me the finger, man. All of them. It was ugly. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> because, you know, we were looking at this game this week, I, I also wanted to kind of poke around and look at the the other games, you know, Golden Axe 2 and 3, uh, at least on the Genesis. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just something about the first game. They, they kind of kind of bottled lightning you know with that one the the two on the genesis two on the genesis was good from what i recall yeah i had never played it oh no man it was solid i remember i played that one uh with a buddy of mine um uh, brian we we played the hell out of it it was really good and again it was a it was really good co-op and everything uh three i know was terrible i i played that well after the fact and i was like oh glad i missed this <laughs> they seem like they came to market like really fast like to jones's point earlier like they were they were they were they were trying to move quick you know to uh you know meet meet the demand you know because at the time you know super nintendo was kind of on the horizon so uh but yeah, maybe they uh, they they kind of rush things a bit too soon on the, on the sequels. But definitely on three, three was awful. It was so bad. <laughs> Go, going through and playing the game, and you know, end to end, looking at it, there's there's a lot of questions that I have about this universe. <laughs> like, there's okay. Well, wait. Here, does, here's a question: how, how does the eagle fly with the bridge connected to it? That seems like it doesn't seem like that's a solvable problem by medieval, you know, technology. But uh, <laughs> uh, you've never took an engineering class, then. Clearly. <laughs> it's, it's okay, totally no, wait. Possible. 
All right, now going back to the, the thing you said about altered beasts being potentially in the same universe. What about Alien Storm? Because the main character in Alien Storm looks a hell of a lot like Axe. So is that uh, like his, his great 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 grandkid? The, the, uh, and now he's kicking alien asses. The, the same guy created that game, so it could be ah. like, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This could yeah, be like man. The, the Uchida game universe. It's anyway. deep. That's, uh, you know, now we, you know, I, I think we know if we're going to revisit Sega in the future that uh, we'll have to explore the rest of the Uchida cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like everybody had a good time reliving this game. But yeah, so uh, next week, I believe Das Pick is uh, choosing something from Sega's past. And uh, let us know uh, what am it I? is, sir. I was just missing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Well, I was torn between a couple. We talked about somebody needs to definitely pick a certain game. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss the opportunity to play this one. So got to have some Streets of Rage 2. Got to have some Streets of Rage too, so we could listen to some sweet, sweet, sweet tunes and beat the hell out of some people. <laughs> Freaking love that yeah. game. Streets of Rage definitely, kind of like Golden Axe, did a lot of things that made it more than what the genre was previously. You know, there was so much more gameplay and uh, balance you know, that uh, Streets of Rage had. So this will be fun to dig back into. So which, which version? Two. All right, let's do it. Yeah, man. Awesome. Well, I would like to, uh, you know, thank you for uh, listening in to us and uh, come back next week when we uh, discuss Streets of Rage 2 on the Sega Genesis. Uh, until then, uh, this is Jones, Daspic, and Gohan signing out. Until next time. Good boy. <laughs> You guys are dorks. <laughs>